Now we will go through the testing and special inspection monitoring that you as project inspectors provide on a given project. So chapter 17A in part 2 of the 2019 CBC has information about the tests and special inspections and we'll be going through and providing an overview of the code changes to that chapter. With regards to the model code, though there are many revision bars, there are actually not many significant modif not many significant changes. The California provisions are mostly the same as the 2016 CBC, but here is a brief summary of the significant changes compared to the 2016 edition. The definitions that were previously included in Chapter 17A have been moved to chapter 2. There's also been addition of some items and code references to table 1705A21, which is applicable for steel, and table 1705A.3, which is for concrete. And this is going to be providing consist consistency with industry practice and other DSA requirements. We've provided additional pointer references for special inspection and or testing for many sections, as far as point of references to other sections in the code. And we've also incorporated some IR requirements into the code language now. And there are many reference pointers to other chapters. For section 1701A.4 in special inspections and tests, in addition to the project inspector, as you're all likely aware, the owner shall employ approved agencies to provide special inspection special inspections, and tests as required by the enforcement agency during construction. However, as you're also likely aware, current DSA, DSA practice allows for the project inspector to perform many inspections that are related to light frame construction. These would be those associated with wood, light wood frame shear wall buildings with regards to the plywood nailing, anchor bolt placement, and hold downs for which you've been involved as project inspectors for many decades now. The previous section of 1701A2 has been relocated to 1702A, and that's been a result of the relocation of definitions to Chapter 2 from what was the 2016, sorry, that's an error, 2016 CBC, and an example of some of the definitions that were previously located in Chapter 17A was approved agency, continuous and periodic inspection. Each of those have been restated in the special inspection definition in Chapter 2. And quality assurance and quality control, and of course the same definitions apply and that quality assurance applies to the owner. And those are associated with your roles as well as the special inspector and the laboratory of record. And then quality control is what applies to the contractor. For 1705A2.1 and structural steel, some of the modifications are that there's been an update to AISC 360 because there's now a 2016 version of AISC 360. And we had to make some modifications that we had in the Section 1705A21 to correlate with this new reference standard. So Chapter N, to make sure that we were consistent with the requirements that we previously had in the 2016 CBC. So the quality assurance provisions in the updated AISC 360 and 341 are still not adopted. And this is continuing with the past practice that we had in the 2016 code. And Table 1705A21 still replaces most of the items in those references. The contractor quality control is still the same as it was during the last code cycle. And the non-destructive testing provisions in those references of AISC 360 and 341 are adopted. Keep in mind the definitions of quality assurance and quality control regarding who, whose role each of those are. For 1705A21, structural steel, continuing on with that, for 
with regards to the table 170521, recall that we previously noted that there are substantial modifications to that, primarily with regards to the references that are provided. So there's not really any new, per se, tests nor special inspections. It's primarily clarifying what was occurring already or what was required in other sections of the code. So the table provides an improved accuracy of the summary information that you would normally see in a given project that has structural steel. So we've clarified in the table to include both special inspection and test requirements. As I just mentioned, there's many reference pointers that have been provided. And we've also included previously missing items, as in items that were lacking in the table but required in other codes or in the reference standard. And we've also provided a little bit more clarification for, those, for a few items within the table itself. You can refer to the 2019 Title 24 Part 2 Final Express Term 17A tab and the resources associated with this recertification. For cold form steel deck in Section 1705A22, there's been no changes regarding the special inspection required for steel and floor roof decks. It is still per the Steel Deck Institute, QAQC, reference. Regarding deck weld special inspection, we've just clarified that testing also occurs and is required and must satisfy the noted sections of CBC 1705A2 1705A.2.5 and Table 1705A.2.1. Again, this is not anything new. It's just recognition that tests are often involved when it comes to deck welding. Regarding changes in 1705A.241 with reference to light frame steel truss inspection and testing, of course, of course, there was sometimes testing involved with these, and we're just making a specific reference to that now by adding and testing. So we did make a slight change in the language here by noting that regardless of the tress span, special inspections required during manufacturing of cold formed light frame steel trusses. You can refer to section 2211A.1.3.3 for additional information, and this reference is provided in the code as well. In section 1705A2.5, inspections and tests, again, just adding the, rep, adding the language and tests to recognize that sometimes tests are occurring related to structural welding. So we've maintained the welding special inspection requirements for all shop and field welding compared to the previous 2016 edition. We've actually incorporated some information that's in IR 17.2 related to non-destructive testing requirements, or NDT. So that's been added for consistency with industry practice. And we require conformance with AWS D11, D13, D1.4. That D1.4 was something that was added. However, that's not a new reference standard that's been around for a while and was likely the reference basis for that type of welding. We're just explicitly recognizing that now with this modification of including that in the listing of the AWS references and, of course, the D1.8 as well. 1705A.2.6, this is actually a new section. However, when you see what the topic is, it's not really any new special inspection or testing. So this is related to the special inspection and test of high strength fastener assemblies. These have been around for quite some time and are usually identified in the design reference standards of AISC 360 or the RCSC or the Research Council for Structural Connections which includes requirements for special inspections and tests. So the reason we added this section was to clarify the special inspections and tests for high strength fasteners. And it also provides us an opportunity to align some code language with the requirements that we include in IR 17.9 for high strength bolting special inspector certifications. We also make reference, uh, provide reference pointers to other CBC sections that are applicable to high strength fasteners. 
regarding 1705A3 in concrete construction. As earlier mentioned, we modified table 1705A3, and there's more detailed information in the resource of 1709 in, in 20 regarding these changes in, 20, in the 2019 Title 24, Part 2, Final Express Terms, 17A, tab, resources tab. Again, no new special inspections nor tests. We've just added many reference pointers and a few previously missing items and clarified others. That pretty well summarizes the extent of the changes, though upon first glance at the margin markings in the code, it will appear as if there are significant changes occurring. But I can assure you it's primarily to add the reference pointers and add a few previously missing items. Again, there's nothing new truly being added. A lot of these special inspections or tests were already code required previously. We're just making explicit reference to them now. And we did, as I mentioned, provide clarification on some of the other items within that table. In 1705A34, regarding inspection of pre-stressed concrete, we added the words and testing, since that sometimes occurs. We've added reference to, to section 1910A for pre-stressing steel and anchorage testing. With regards to continuous inspection for pre-stressed concrete, no changes really there with regards to all plant fabrication must have continuous special inspection for the pre-stressed concrete members and tensioning of post-tension members that are constructed on site. We did add an exception though to clarify that continuous special inspection is not required during site placement of post-tensioning at a construction site. This is consistent with industry practice and was likely done in the past, though from a strict reading of the code, technically was not permitted. But we recognize that the inspector is, need not be there while they are laying out the tendon profiles. They can be present there after they've completed that to verify the profiles are consistent with the, are in compliance with the approved construction documents. Regarding 1705A3.7, composite construction cores, well, that's a new subsection that's been added. It's primarily to provide reference to the previously existing 1910A4, which has information about composite construction core sampling and testing. Similar for 1705A3.8, special inspections and tests for post-installed concrete, this subsection was added so that we could reference table 1705A3 and 1910A5 for post-installed anchor special inspection and testing. Again, this has been in the code for a while, those sections that have been noted regarding special inspection and testing of post-installed anchors. We've just added this section to clarify and point to those. Regarding masonry construction covered in section 1705A.4, as far as the special inspections and tests, because there is now a new masonry reference standard, the TMS 40216, compared to the 40213 for the previous 2016 edition of the building code, they made changes to the quality assurance tables, and those are now in tables three and four, and the applicable level would be level three for most structures that are DSA under DSA's jurisdiction. So the amendment requires level three quality assurance in lieu of the TMS 402 default of level two for schools. And this is consistent with past practice. We've just made had to make a change in the specific reference as shown there because of the new reference standard doing so. We're still maintaining or alignment with the quality assurance program that's implicit within the field act and chapter 21a in 1705 a41 regarding glass unit glass unit masonry and masonry veneer in risk categories two three or four we're continuing with the overall approach that the amendment requires level two again that's two it used to be b quality assurance for glass unit masonry and veneer for all schools and the overall approach of ensuring that risk category two and three have been added to compared to the model building code, that's consistent with the 2016 modifications. So there's been really no changes here other than just the specific references regarding the tables because there's a new masonry reference standard. 
in section 1705A.5 dealing with wood construction, for metal plate connected wood trusses spanning 60 feet or greater, it's worth noting that there's been a model code error which, unfortunately, was incorporated into the 2019 CBC code language in section 1705A.5.2. Instead, what should be used is the 2016 CBC language, and this is similar to what would have been used for the 2015 and 2018 IBC. Therefore, the previous requirement for special inspection applies as before which is for temporary installation, restraint, or bracing, and permanent individual truss member restraint or bracing, both of which applies to truss spans 60 feet or greater. For 1705A.5.4, for structural glued laminated timber, we're still requiring continuous special inspection by a DSA certified glue lamb ins special inspector during all structural glue lamb manufacturing except for those situations in which the member is less than 5 and an eighth by 18 inches, spans less than 32 feet, and is a non-custom member. You can refer to BU 1703 for further information regarding the specifics required to meet that exemption allowance. We did make an update to the reference standard for glue lambs, and that is ANSI APA 190.1, the 2017 edition, and there's also a new section reference within that, which is section 13.1. Regarding 1705A.6, with respect to soil special inspections, there have been some new subsections added, specifically 1705A.6.2 for earth returning shoring that was added so we could provide a reference pointer to 1812A. And the next subsection is also new, 1705A.6.3, vibrostone columns. Again, this was just merely added so we could provide a reference pointer to 1813A. There's not any new tests or special inspections. This is just a reference pointer to the noted sections. Since Chapter 17A is largely, for, uh, is largely functioning as the collection of where all of the special inspection and structural testing criteria is contained, we thought it important from a user standpoint to make sure that some of these other code sections are appropriately referenced in this chapter. Continuing on, there's also some non-structural testing and special inspections, and those are mentioned here in 1705A.12.6. So there was a new item six added, and this was in the model code that clarifies special inspection of mechanical, electrical, and plumbing equipment and distribution systems to ensure that the systems appropriately have clearances from fire sprinklers that would be specified by either 6.1 in ASC 716, section 13.2.3, that is a new reference standard, ASC 716, compared to ASC 710, or section 6.2, which specifies three inches minimum. So make sure that you check your construction documents for possibly larger clearances, as these are just the code minimums. Additionally, recall that the administrative code has project inspector continuous inspection, which governs over the CBC periodic special inspection. Additionally, we have our interpretation of regulations 25-2, which requires six inches minimum clearance from the T-bar support and bracing wires from unbraced mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems. So these would govern over the information noted here for those scenarios. For 1705A.13.2, for non-structural components, there's been an amendment that allows fire sprinkler seismic sway bracing to satisfy our factory mutual 1950 or FM 1950 because that's deemed seismically qualified because it's been determined to be consistent with the NFPA 13 requirements. Alternative testing procedures are allowed when approved by DSA for these components. For 1705A.17 regarding fire resistant penetrations and joints, We've clarified that special inspection also applies to many common DSA projects. That is, it includes risk category 2, 3, or 4. So this is to be consistent with the overall quality assurance requirements contained in the Field Act. 
For 1705A.19 Shot Crete, we've clarified that the testing requirements in, AC, in the reference standard ACI 506.2 also apply. Regarding DSA's form DSA 103, what's been traditionally referred to as the TNI list, the form DSA 103, the list of required structural tests and special inspections, is still being prepared by the design professional and responsible charge. However, DSA recently has a new format which shows all the items, but only checked items that still apply. We may be changing this in the future, but at the time of this presentation, initial, this initial presentation, this was the format that it was being provided in. Keep in mind that the TNI list does not define the testing and inspection plans. The, spec the project approved specifications really has the complete list. The TNI list is just a summary of the requirements. That's a primary benefit to the testing labs and special inspectors and for you as the project inspector and the coordination of those efforts. The list is, was previously in an Excel document but is now separate from being Excel. It's now in a different format, but it is still completed by humans and therefore it's susceptible to mistakes and inconsistencies or improper use. Therefore, make sure you check your specifications for the project for the complete inspection and testing program. So this is an example of what the new format looks like for the DSA 103 at the time of this presentation. It includes again all of the testing that and inspection that could occur on your project, but the check boxes on the left hand side would be those that apply. They're rather small on this slide, but on the left hand leftmost column you see ones that are identified with a check mark. So make sure that you refer to those and look out for those items with a check mark because those are going to be the ones that apply to your particular project. We still have the appendix which identifies items by the design professional that are exempt from DSA special inspection and testing. And these are reviewed by DSA plan reviewers for, for approval and consistence, consistency with what is allowed and permitted in the code. Keep in mind that the design professional and the design professional must identify on the approved construction documents those items that are identified as being exempt. This ensures that you as the project inspector don't have to be guessing about which those items are. So this takes out some of the guesswork that may have been there previously because the, the requirement now is for the design professional to specifically identify on the approved construction documents those elements that are exempt from a given special inspection or test that has been identified on the 103 appendix. When it comes to your role as being the project inspector and providing the oversight or monitoring of the testing lab, one of the things that you'll need to do is verify that the structural tests performed are only being performed by a qualified testing lab to do so. You can check the DSA website, the Laboratory Evaluation and Acceptance Program, to find out what are the labs that have certain acceptances for certain tests and special inspections. And this is also related to the sampling and transporting of those test specimens. We still can, are continuing the same exception we've had for many years regarding sampling and testing, testing duties may be reassigned when approved in writing by DSA. And the project inspector must verify that the special inspectors have the valid certifications for the work that they are inspecting. And this is just a repeat of a previous slide related to information noted in section in the administrative code section 4-342. So make sure that the lab sends the reports directly to all the parties and if you don't get those reports within seven days for off-site tests you could call you should call the lab immediately. If they don't send the you the reports notify the design professionals, the school district and DSA. 
DSA will withdraw the laboratory evaluation acceptance from a lab that does not conform to the reporting requirements identified in the code. So continuing on with the monitoring of the test lab by the project inspector, the test reports are sent from the lab to you as a project inspector. The tests and materials need to be received within one workday for on-site tests or seven days for off-site tests. And if any errors in reporting by the test lab are promptly corrected. And of course, the special inspectors, their reporting needs to comply with the content and protocol requirements identified in IR 1712, which was briefly mentioned earlier on. And it has more detailed requirements regarding the special inspection reporting provided by special inspectors. When it comes to the project inspector providing special inspection oversight, the monitoring of special inspectors is perhaps a better way to put that. The project inspector needs to verify that the special inspectors have the appropriate experience, equipment, and perform thorough inspections. This is part of the due diligence since you rely on these individuals to provide you with the confidence to sign your verified report, the DSA 6 PI. We also want you to verify that they have valid certifications for the work that is being inspected. And this is something that's required in the noted code section at the admin code section 4-342. You act as a second pair of eyes with respect to that verification process that is often done by, prod by the labs who hire special inspectors. Make sure that the special inspector inspects all the work whenever possible. Recall that any replacement special inspectors may require DSA approval also, it's important that the D make sure that the, pro the special inspectors have the DSA approved construction documents are, and are familiar with the applicable reference documents. These are generally going to be the requirements in Chapter 4 of the Administrative Code, as well as the technical code requirements and industry standards applicable to their discipline. The special inspector needs to provide reports that comply with the content and protocols identified in IR 1712, which deals with special inspection reporting requirements. For example, they need to be clear regarding non-conforming construction and reporting that immediately, providing inspection dailies to the design professionals within seven days, and so on.